and I'll just start this. Are you there? Hey, hey. I'm over here. I'm down here on the blue track. I feel sorry for you if you're a dancer and you want to buy a partridge. I don't make and a beer here. Yeah. Because the price has gone up. You can't have you. nice things. But you haven't made more money since last year. Nope. Broadcasting from Nashville, Tennessee, offering a glimpse inside the music industry, shedding light on things they don't want you to know, and exposing some of the industry's biggest secrets. You're listening to the Turned Up Podcast, presented by Real Sound Productions. Here are your hosts, Jake Jones. On the first day of Christmas, my Robert gave to me. And Robert Venable. A hug. This doesn't have the same ring to it. It also didn't have the same tune to it. <laughs> I didn't, just kind of picked a random note and went with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think so either. We should just, you know, record a new version, which there are tons of versions of that song. Um, there are a lot. Jeff Foxworthy's Redneck 12 Days of Christmas. Which is my, my favorite. favorite. Yeah, I think that's probably the best one out there. 12 pack of Bud, 11 wrestling tickets, 10 of Copenhagen, 9 years probation, 8 table dancers, 7 packs of Red Mint, 6 cans of Spam. <sighs> Go. What's the five? Five. I don't remember the five. I don't. I'm not going to Google it because four big mud tires, three shotgun shells, two hunting dogs, and some parts to a Mustang GT. GT. Five wrestling tickets. Five. Well, what you said wrestling tickets like at eleven or something. Oh, you're right. No, never mind. I don't know what the five is. Uh, and that was an ode to every old person listening to this who knows who Jeff Foxworthy even is. That's why we do know Jeff Foxworthy. I think yeah. like you might be a redneck would probably be the thing you would know if you've heard anything of You him. might be a redneck. You might be a redneck. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, don't do that. What we gonna do is <laughs> saw the top of your head off. Root around there with a stick. See if we can't find that dad burn clock. It's one of my favorite jokes that he did. I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Turned Up Podcast. This is my professional podcasting voice. My name is Jake Jones. That is Sitting not across your, from me that's, that's is not your voice. Roberto Vinable. Venable? That's how they say it a lot of times. They try to make it really fancy. It's just Venable. And it's not Roberto. Just Robert. But if you were Italian, it would be like, Roberto Venable. Roberto Venable. It would be, but I'm not. Uh, but you, Maybe I am. You could. You have like black hair. That Yeah. I do, but you might but, be Italian. Italian. I walk upright. I might be human. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I like it. If you haven't guessed today, this podcast is about the 12 days of Christmas. But you have never heard it like this. And I'm getting ready to throw down because Oh, we're gonna get a fight. We have a little bit of a disagreement. We do. On on what it's about. But before we go any further, I want to tell you about Mr. Robert. Roberto Vinable. Vinable. Uh, Robert Venable is my best friend in the whole world. Um, he's Grammy nominated, Dove award winning. I'm staring, I'm literally like blinded by the light gleaning off of his gold record, his like what best new album of the year, billboard number one charts. And then he's run out of room on his walls and lining the floor are his multiple (laughs) awards and accolades. I do have some picture frames on that. My gold record's crooked. I just noticed that. I did that. I was hoping that's going to freak me out man it, it just makes me feel a little better about <laughs> you having one and me not why it's for your work with kelly clarkson the guy has worked with kelly clarkson quite a bit actually um and uh with her on vocals as well as drums and all kinds of things um he's also worked with 21 pilots mute math megadeth and a slew of really cool hip-hop artists that you know um he also plays drums for the band as we ascend he is a hit writer for shoalsville music shout out to chad green at shoalsville hey chad um, he's a multi-instrumentalist, uh, like I said, drummer, pianist, pianist, pianist. I'm looking at his guitar, his bass. I, I collect his, instruments. His his other guitar. Good at oh, whatever. I have, um, them. recently acquired a tape recorder, tape machine, because he wants to get back to whenever, uh, when they first middle, invented them. He middle age it. crisis. Yeah. He I remember remembers that. it really yeah. well. That was a good day. Uh, Robert, once you pass 200 years old, I don't think anything is middle age anymore. I mean, I, I'm planning on living another couple of centuries. Well, okay. Well, hey, middle age, I guess. Yeah. Um, for real, though, the guy's an amazing friend. Uh, he's famous, of course, for all kinds of things. You can look him up, verified on Twitter. Don't look that and, up. And uh, holla. Um, <laughs> Tweet me. <laughs> and uh, he's mo- actually most recently, uh, among the many things that he's famous for, most recently famous for creating a new method of milking goats. I did that. <laughs> did that. I did that. 
oh, you're just going to stare at me and let me take it from there, huh? You have nothing else to add to that. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to do is uh, experiment with different ways of milking random animals. And I found that cows don't like certain things. Um, goats are a little more lenient as of experimental ways of milking. Jake's <laughs> dying over there. <laughs> um, so I've tried different vacuum cleaners, <laughs> wet vax, dry vax, <laughs> handy vax, <laughs> dust busters. But one thing that a lot of people haven't tried to think about using yet is when the compressor on a refrigerator dies, you can repurpose that completely with the fan from an old Oldsmobile. And so I rigged one together with some duct tape, plugged her into the generator, hooked her up to the goat teats, and hit the power button. <laughs> the goat teats. I'm telling you, I don't know if it worked any better, but it was a lot of fun trying to see that goat get off that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, Turned Up Podcast. And, uh, he's very famous now for that on top of all of the other things that he's very famous for. Not famous for the invention itself, but more so for the 14 days I had to spend down at County. <laughs> <laughs> for the inappropriate things animal I did to a goat. Animal cruelty. Apparently you can't hook up a compressor to a goat teat. They don't like that. <laughs> like the way they don't like that in Akron, Ohio very much. <laughs> Spent a little time at the courthouse there, huh? We're not in Akron, Ohio, but if you haven't listened to the last few episodes, we've decided and made a, a vow to bring up Akron, Ohio in every episode from then forward. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Jones with the jokes. Um, Jake Jones is also an award-winning multi-award winning uh, billboard number one chart writing mixing producing guitarist um, done all the things rock album of the year best new artist uh, current front man and guitarist I'm trying not to look down because you have your shirt above your belly and I'm looking trying to keep it uh, goat teat high uh, <laughs> he's rubbing it at his stomach not the goat teat um, the, the guy the front man right now of the band as we ascend um, one of the front men I guess we have two Justin Forshaw, shout out to you on the West Coast, Best Coast, Pacific Northwest. Um, so we have two singers, two guitarists, and you are one of each of those um, for the band, as we said. You used to play in a band called We As Human, toured the world, uh, got to play in all the coolest places. Um, I know all said, them coolest. We said Red Rocks. Uh, we talked about the Machine Shop last episode. All sorts of fun places. Did you ever play the 930 Club in D.C.? No, I actually never played in D.C. Spent some time in D.C. just chumming around. Electric um, Factory in Philly? Yes. Ah, all right. So I'm three for four right now from naming places. <laughs> so he's played at three-fourths of all the coolest places in all the world. <laughs> um, and yes, one of my, like I my, said, my, my best friend. We we're going to say one of, but we should, just, we should just own it. I think we're determining the relationship. DTR right now, we are best friends, Jake. The thing that we haven't really gotten into is how... You started a whole clothing line dedicated to just uh, napping, not like the things you'd wear at night, not sleepwear, sleepwear, but napwear. Um, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, that's right. Please expand on that. I said a little bit more than that. Though. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, a, it's a clothing line that you wear when you take a nap. Um, it's a little different than the nightwear. Um, so please share with me some of those ideas of the controversial ones, like the ones when the police stepped in, like that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so I was trying to actually help by printing uh, missing children on napware. I thought you go to snuggle up with your favorite teddy bear, your blankie. You want to take a nap because we all do that. Yeah, um, and Dude. you look at your nap, your nap jays instead of your PJs. Yeah, that's the, that's the name, patent pending. And uh, you know, and you and you see a child that's missing or gone. It makes you think about it. Maybe you maybe you have a dream. You figure out where they're at. Uh, I accidentally, um, I took a bunch of pictures out of a, a school yearbook. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm not saying it was the lady's fault, okay, over there. It m might have been my Aunt Janine, but right, it was either not. way. Um, I asked for uh, just Google, send me some images of missing children. And uh, considering it was her first time to ever Google anything, mm -hmm. she accidentally sent me school yearbook photos. None of the kids were missing, and People were upset that all around the world, pictures of their photos were going on. I remember two things that you told me uh, one day, explicitly in a meeting. One, that it was weird that the K, the K key on the keyboard is right next to the M. So when your aunt was Googling missing children, he, she accidentally Googled kissing children. And so those images made it onto some of the nap jays. But the other thing you specifically you asked me 
Um, do you think it'd be a problem when the missing children rate went way low if you just started using found children? It's pictures and that said, I don't think that's a good idea. And I don't. I don't. Uh, are you just? <clears throat> why are you doing that little cut there? I don't. <clears throat> We're not supposed don't to, remember. We can't talk about. I that. don't think I said that. I don't. Right. I think I sent that. That's right. Uh, you did not say that. That never happened. <laughs> Back to the podcast. All right. What are we talking about? On the first day of Christmas, my mother gave to me. There are so many things right and wrong about that sentence. A partridge in a par- partry. Pa- partry. 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 We should talk about this because this makes no sense if you don't know what we're talking about. But you know hey, what? It doesn't make sense if you do know what we're talking about. We're talking about the 12 days of Christmas, right? Yeah. And the thing is, we've all heard like the radio shows talk about it. And we've heard um, on websites and stuff, read that there are hidden meanings or behind the scenes of or what it really meant or the cost of the every year for the 12 days of Christmas. But Jake, in our research, you and I, we found some things that may be completely wrong with those explanations or... I mean, even some explanations that you and I disagree on. Yes, and, and it's going to go deep. And we're going to try to make this as short as we can. There might be some things that you might learn uh, about the song that we're singing this Christmas season. And if you're Jewish, shout out to our Jewish listeners. Happy we, Hanukkah. I uh, know there are lots of you out there. It's uh, Today is Monday, December 3rd. 3rd, yeah. So yesterday Hanukkah was just kicked off day. yesterday. Um, Until next Monday. So you're probably not singing the 12 Days of Christmas. Maybe you are. At least you've heard it. Yes. I mean, maybe. You can't really be a human, at least not in America, and have heard it a thousand times, probably since Thanksgiving or or Halloween. Maybe even before. Yeah, Halloween. They start early. Earlier <laughs> and earlier. Yeah, yeah. Fourth of July decorations are going to go down and Christmas decorations are going to go up. I give it three more years. Do you know, on the banister of my in my house, when you walk in the front door and the banister goes up to the second level... There is a, I don't know what you call it, the, the, the foliage wrap, um, the tinsel and uh, some Christmas lights that wrap that banister going all the way up. And I intentionally left those there from last Christmas <laughs> to see if I could leave them all year <laughs> round without anybody saying anything. And you have succeeded. And every night, they're on a timer. They come on. There's white lights. And like my wife and I will walk right by it and like, oh, that's cool. And just in the back of my head, I'm like, yes. So I didn't notice the light on and blinking until you said something like last week. <laughs> and I'm here a lot. Yep. Yeah. So uh, 12 days of Christmas. Right. All 12 of them. Let's, let's jump into this. Um, starting with what are the 12 days of Christmas? Well, a lot of people believe that the 12 days of Christmas. Not the song. No. Yes. Yeah, the actual 12 days of Christmas. Um, end on Christmas Day and start 12 days before that. And you kind of like give gifts and stuff leading up to it. That is what I thought. That's what I thought. However, the 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days following December 25th. Now there are speculations like that differ between does it start on the 25th or does it start the next day on the 26th? Um, and we might touch on that a little bit in a minute. But uh, it, it ends with the Feast of the Epiphany, which is January 5th. Again, some people might, if it starts on the 25th, it's the 5th. If it starts on the 26th, it'll be January 6th. Um, and the last of those 12 days... Um, known as Twelfth Night in England, was a time when people traditionally gave gifts. Um, So this is the Twelfth Night. Essentially, the idea is December 25th. Although, you know, we celebrate Christmas December 25th as the birth of Jesus. Right. Um, uh, But the idea being he was born, and then 12 days later, the Magi or the the kings... The We Three Kings guys. um, ...arrived to to give gifts to him. And so, yeah, so the 12th night would be 12 days after the birth uh, is when they give gifts, um, January 5th or 6th, depending on when it kicks off. And I'm not completely sure on that because we're not in England. Maybe some of our English listeners can let us know. Yeah, and if you want to get really deep into it, um, a lot of people don't even believe that Christ was born on... December 25th because of the way that the calendars lined up differently then and where the North Star would have been and all that kind of stuff didn't make sense. Yeah, because it, it, it seems like it, it wasn't. They, and it had to do with the, the Jewish holiday and the, the census and all that kind of stuff that was going on. That's, that's another podcast. Most likely was not around this time of year. Regardless. That's when we celebrate it. Yeah, that's when it's like nationally celebrated. I mean, you know, very generally speaking. Um, but... Did you know Jake Jones sitting in the green chair across the room from me with your eyes wide open that the uh, earliest known version that appeared um, of this 12 days of Christmas, as we know as the song was back in 1780 in a children's book called mirth without mischief. 
And that's, uh, yeah, 1780. That's a long time ago. So I did not know this until today, but I do know now, thanks to you and your informative research, uh, that a first edition of the book sold for $23,750 hairs. Uh, oh, hairs. At a, help me with that. Sotheby's. 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 Uh, auction in 2014. Um, and, but you can get it on Amazon, like Prime Books right now, probably for a lot less than that. It's a true story, the first edition. I don't know if that works. Really? First edition? I don't edition. know if the first edition on digital copy it really means as much. <laughs> However, you can read that very first edition on Amazon right now. Um, so what, uh, there are other variants, right? A ton of other variants, and you can look at Wikipedia and see a ton of different ways. I mean, like a timeline of when they switched out variant like little things like here in this year they did this instead of this on the 12th day and this the melody changed there's a whole bunch of stuff like that changed throughout the years people I mean, have like really kept tabs on the song i don't like there are we'll get into this too professors who are uh, like acclaimed experts yeah we will uh, yes we will that's where we're gonna start fighting um but like in one 19th century variant the uh, the gifts come from my mother like you sang earlier rather than my true love so on the first day of Christmas, my mother gave to me, which is interesting compared to, you know, my true love gave to me, my mother gave to me, especially with, we look at some of these meanings in a little bit, like what this song was written about or supposedly written about, um, that your mother giving you these gifts doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> or it might make sense in a very small sect of people who need a lot of professional help in the late 1700s um so just fun fact in the earliest versions the word on isn't there um at the beginning of each phrase so like on the first day of it doesn't say that it just says the first day of christmas my mother gave to me (laughs) on was added in what 1909 1909 uh and then uh, on became the way to sing it after that yeah and some people actually say that the Christmas Carol goes back to the 18th century when it was sung as part of a, like a memory and forfeit game. That's what they call it. Um, you know, if like, you ever play the game where you're like, I'm going on a trip and I'm packing an apple. I'm going on a trip, I'm packing an apple and a banana. And you have to keep going back and forth or around the circle and Until repeating everybody's thing. Remember that person right. loses. And so that's what this was kind of, some people attribute to this being a game like that, um, where the players are required to memorize the previous verses and add ones to them. And the ones who failed to do that were to either give a kiss or a candy to others as forfeit. That actually makes a lot of sense. It does. It sounds like one of those kind of songs. It does. Uh, I mean, yeah. And uh, a variation on that, actually, um, that you have to recite the, the last line, the 12 days. On the 12th day of Christmas, or sorry, the 12th day of Christmas, my mother gave to me 12, 11, 11, 11 10. You have to go all the way through, but you have to do it in one breath. Oh, man. And uh, so I'm guessing you probably do it pretty quickly or try to get through it so you can breathe or not pass out. Right. Um, Or else you owe somebody a kiss and candy and you'd be passed out on the floor. So I also heard that it was uh, written as like a tongue twister, right? Like seven swans of swimming. Say that. That's five times fast. Seven. No. Seven swans. No, you can't. Right. (laughs) Um, And that's, you know, uh, Piper's piping. um, uh, there's a lot of like Peter's Piper's Pike. Pike can't even say that. Yep. One. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of those kind of kind of letter things. But that's also a, just a kind of a common thing in songwriting is having a lot of words with the same. Yeah. Anyway. Um, is this, so is this where things get hairy? Well, we know, of course, if if you've ever looked it up, and I had not ever looked it up, and I guess I never really questioned what what is this song about. I've always thought it was weird. I mean, why are, why is somebody giving Right. I've tried to like, uh, like rationalize it in my brain. Like here are some ladies. <laughs> Why are you giving a whole bunch of humans to somebody else? Well, I mean, back when... But and lords? Was, you know, You're giving dudes and chicks to somebody? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, pardon my well, slang. That's or leaping. Yeah, I guess. If you, could, you can give like pipers and drummers and stuff. I would start a nice band with some birds. Yeah. A lot of birds. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of birds. And uh, some jewelry. Oh, I just found out that if you consumed all the birds uh, in the song, okay, it would be something like twenty seven hundred calories. That's all. If you had them in like at, at, in one sitting, I don't feel like that's right. Twenty seven hundred. That's what I read, and it said that uh, you can do that with a good like double Big Mac or something. Said that 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 was no. pretty good considering the average American Thanksgiving meal is about forty five hundred calories. Twenty seven thousand calories, maybe. That's weird. Those are some really lightweight birds. 
Oh. Swans, that's a lot of calories. I mean, a swan's got to have some calories. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's just what I read. Interesting. Maybe some of them have negative calories or something. I think I got that from Box. I don't like Box anymore. <laughs> they disagree with my estimation skills. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. Let's so, just, let's wait, go. wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm going to talk first. Okay, I'm going to talk first. I'm talking first. Um, uh, so, so if, you've if, done you some, some... if you've done some research, you've read that this song is about <gasps> Christian symbolism. Um, yeah, Catholic symbolism. Catholic, Catholic to get, Christian. To yeah. narrow it in. And, uh, Christian is in about Christ, about... Sure, sure. Uh, well, the partridge in the pear tree is Jesus, uh, which can... makes total perfect sense, right? Well, we'll talk about that. When in a I think of a partridge in a pear tree, I think of Jesus on the cross, the, our Lord and Savior. Because partridges are very giving birds, and Jesus was a That's, giving. Yeah, human. okay. I don't know. Okay, so I don't know if I buy that. They're saying that that uh, it, the song was written to help Christians learn and pass on the tenets of their faith while avoiding persecution. So back in the 1700s, I mean, the persecution stuff was more so, I think, in the 15, 1600s, but got into the 1700s. Uh, Okay, I'll bring up a point and feel free to argue with me on this, Jake. Let's just throw it out there and see what happens. I don't think that Catholics were really persecuted during the late 1700s when the song was said to be you know, written in that. When it was said to be written. Okay. But let's talk a little bit about, it's, this is where it's going to go probably unnecessarily deep. Okay. Let's talk about the Reformation. Oh, geez. So if you don't know what that is, uh, if you don't know anything about Christianity or the church or or whatever, um, I'm going to really, really broad strokes. Just, just nutshell here. Um, it, it, basically, all Christians were Catholics for the most part. At there one was point. one church, yeah. the Roman Catholic Church. In the 1500s, um, there was a big split and it was called the uh, Protestant Reformation. Uh, and it's where... Um, a, basically a bunch of people said, hey, Catholics, you're doing it wrong. We disagree. And they became Protestants. So if you are not Catholic, but you are a Christian, then you are a Protestant. Um, and so that is literally the most vague nutshell in the world. It's sure, totally but, fascinating, interesting, and a huge part of American history if you, if you uh, research it. And there are whole college courses dedicated to just the Reformation. Yes. So, yeah, that's a whole other um, thing. But, uh, so, this happened, and uh, basically, Protestants, uh, certain certain sects of Protestants believed that Catholics were evil and bad, and vice versa. And uh, and so, then you had this time where all, all any government knew how to do was to run their government like a church and to run a church like a government. And so, in England... Uh, up, up through the 1700s, um, you had uh, church, what would you call it, like a church state? Yeah, um, like a churchament. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, what, uh, that's one of the leading reasons why uh, the pilgrims set sail for the Americas was to escape that. And that is why uh, in, our, on our, in our constitution, separation of church and state is such an important thing because... Uh, you don't want the government getting into your religion um, because that's exactly what happened in England uh, where there was, they, they we would establish a church and everyone in the country had to follow that religion. Right. And if you didn't, you could be prosecuted. And for Catholics uh, within, a, within a certain time frame, um, and I was re- researching it today, actually, you could be hung if you were caught practicing uh, Catholicism in England. So in the 1500s, uh, Queen Elizabeth um, uh, jumped into rule in England, and she was the she was definitely like Catholics bad. She was a Protestant and a Reformationist. Of course, it had all just happened, and uh, yeah, it was was ordering, you know, but, off with their heads. But what does that have to do with this song? Well, who uh, th- I, I think it's conjecture to say when the song was written if they don't really know. They're just kind of guessing. So you're saying that maybe it was written and like sung from, you know, gener- passed on from generation to generation and finally put in, put into writing or at least writing that we found at 1790? I would say, you know, it, so here's the thing, just just trying to use a little deductive 17, reasoning. 1780, sorry. If if it's illegal, like punishable by death to be a certain religion, you're not going to write down a bunch of stuff about your religion um, cause that could get you killed. 
And so that's why they had to put it in song form and use it to teach sure. and to kind of I mean I mean think about the the Jews during World War II, no, right? I know. They had their they had their things like that they're kind of little secret things and, to and signify s- like I'm a Jew, you're a Jew, but we don't want the Nazis to know that. Sure, and you know, slavery with the underground railroad and ways of communicating without putting anything in writing to get word from slave one slave camp to another slave, you know, plantation or farm or camp or whatever you want to call it to where they can help escape or get, you know, teach them ways without actually writing anything down. A lot of them had to do with um, old songs. But my point is, if that's true and what you're saying is true, then how, were they even able to celebrate Christmas? I mean, if they were persecuted by death and uh, with death as a punishment for any kind of Christian Protestant belief, why are they able to celebrate Christ with Christmas at all? Well, it wasn't Christian Protestant. It was Christian Catholic. I'm Christian Catholic. Um, because celebrating Jesus, Christmas, all that was not bad or wrong. Um, and so- was shared by Protestant and Catholic? Absolutely. Um, but the idea being that the 12 days of Christmas is about the, the Catholic catechism- um, and we'll get into that, uh, what each of the, the, the 12 things is. What they represent. Um, supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Ugh, I'm very biased. I want to believe that that's what it is about. I think it's a cool story, but it also sounds like um, one of those chain letters that you would like, you know, I am a Christian and I think it's cool too, but I think it does sound very Christian-y and like something that Christians would do to be like, you know what? Let's make this even more about the season. Well, and the argument is that it definitely kind of got its start as literally a chain email. In fact, I found a, a, a chain email that was circulated in 1998. Sure. Um, pointing out a bunch of stuff. But that chain email, essentially what I started doing for this podcast was, okay, so if this is what this said back in 98 and that all the claims that it's it's about Christian elements come from this sort of um, conjecture, then I'm going to set out to disprove this chain email and see what happens. And so that's what I was trying to do. And the more I dug into it, the more I was like, this can't be disproven, but it can't necessarily be proven. Either. I know, I know. So another point uh, against that theory would be the happy bouncing nature of the song and how that didn't fit the nature of the Catholic church at the time at all. You know, the Catholic the the music in the Catholic Church is very very uh, we'll call it traditional now, but there are certain notes um, and formations and I'm not going to bore you with it, but certain ways that songs are put together in the Catholic Church. And you would think if they were going to make a song out of this as a teaching ritual, that they would make it probably fit the whole Catholic uh, you know form the formation of a Catholic song. So you're right, you're not wrong. Um, however, if you're going to make a song to be able to sing in front of Protestants that would kill you if they thought you were Catholic, you're probably not going to write the song good point. to sound like a Catholic church song. That's a good point. Okay, so let's, let's, let's stick a pin in that. And let's talk about what, if, if you're right, and that's true, and this was all about the Catholic um, catechism and secret ways of passing on information and teaching. Let's talk about what all these 12 days are in that theory in mind, like with that theory in mind. All right, so keep in mind um, and, and one of the arguments I heard against this was that each of the 12 elements have nothing to do with what they supposedly represent. But if this is supposed to be a coded song sung in secret at a time when it was illegal to be Catholic, you're not going to, you're going to try to not make it obvious. You're mm-hmm. going to sing about things that aren't that, churchy or Catholic that makes specifically. Sense. Right? So it would be the first day of Christmas, my mother gave to me Jesus on the cross. Hey, a man hanging right. from a tree. <laughs> oh, that, oh, no. That sounds really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that would be teaching the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Here's a news. Mom! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Mom, I didn't even have this one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was thinking more horrified, but okay. I know. No, I, I took it the other way. <laughs> I saw the look on your face. That's exactly what I wanted. (laughs) This this is the one. Oh no. I don't have this guy. Okay, so let's start on day two. Okay, so two turtle doves, um, and this idea 
of what it means is the, you know, the Old and New Testament, the two testaments. And this is, this is very widely accepted. If you Google the, the true meaning of the 12 days of Christmas, you're going to find this as the primary behind the scenes answer, but we have more. So stay tuned until we get through this. Yes. Uh, three French hens are the, the three, uh, what would you say? Like the three new commandments or, or the three greatest. The virtues. Virtues. Yes. Faith, hope, and love. Um, the, the theological virtues. Of course, we know that the greatest of these is love. Yes, of course. Uh, four calling birds, the four gospels, and or the four evangelists. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. First four books of the New Testament. Five golden rings, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, uh, also known as the, um, the Torah, yeah. uh, the, which in Jewish tradition, very significant. That was uh, every, every Jew had to memorize uh, the Pentateuch as a child, from what I understand. Uh, six geese laying, which are the six days of creation, because you know that God rested on the seventh. Seven swans a swimming, uh, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, the seven sacraments, um, and that's a very Catholic. Um, that is a very reference. Good. Yeah. Eight maids a milking, which are the eight beatitudes, uh, the sad things. Nine ladies dancing, which is the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians nine. Of course, uh, 10 Lords a leaping, which are the most obvious, the 10 commandments, 11 pipers piping the 11 faithful apostles. Because we know the 12th one, uh, betrayed dun, 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 dun. Uh, yep, for 30 pieces of silver is my favorite one. 12 drummers drumming. I wonder why, uh, the 12, 12- sh- <laughs> <laughs> hey, you made a drum sound cause the drummers, I get it. Uh, the 12 points of doctrine in the apostles creed. And that's not just a video game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Apostles' Creed, by the way, is amazing and you should read it uh, no matter what you believe. Uh, but let's go back. Let's circle back. We skipped number one. The true meaning of Christmas is the partridge in a pear tree. Partridge in a pear tree, um, <laughs> which is Jesus Christ. Uh, but I, I want to talk about that really quick. Um, I read this really cool article in the uh, Vancouver Courier um, from 2015. And it, it uh, kind of pointed to a little bit about the, the partridge. So I had heard uh, some other meanings, which we'll get to in a moment, about what the partridge could represent. A lot of them. As well as the pear tree. But here is uh, a professor uh, of the New Testament, uh, Dr. Paul Spilsbury uh, at the UBC campus. And he says uh, that both my true love, that my true love gave to me, uh, is referencing Jesus as my true love. Uh, and the partridge and the pear tree also representing Jesus. Uh, the partridge, because it's a bird that will sacrifice its life to save its children. Um, and, uh, and then he goes through and lists all the rest of these. Uh, but that is why they picked the partridge to represent Jesus. All right. Um, I tried to look that up actually and couldn't find either that it does or it doesn't. Mm. Any bird watchers or bird enthusiasts out there, av- aviary, Aviarians? A, what are they called? I have no idea. Well, if you know <laughs> if you know anything about partridges, please let us know, other than the song, because we don't even know about that. Apparently they hang out in pear trees a lot. Uh, or maybe we just put that together for the song's purpose. Well, if you're if you're not on board with it being a Catholic catechism teaching utility back in the times of persecution, maybe you can jump on this one. It's probably a love song. And this is where I'm sitting with it right now. Um, And it's probably about a wedding. So Edward Finney, a professor of classics at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, told the Southeast Missourian in 1990, some of them are rather impossible to give, talking about the gifts, like eight maids and milking and nine ladies dancing. All those ladies and dancing and pipers and drums imply this is a wedding, which makes sense. Like you're lining up like some entertainment and you're... inviting some people that are of higher stature and in some entertainment. Um, the song is loaded with references to fertility, like the maids are milking, lords are leaping, geese are laying, and if, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, right? So I actually was so distraught by this idea that it's just, it's about a wedding. It has nothing to do with any sort of, you know, Christian sort of history is what I was going to say. Sure. Uh, it is the 12 days of Christmas, not the 12 days of holiday. That's true. Um, and uh, I, I did a little bit of research on this professor. 
Okay. Um, I literally like went back to archives from uh, university, the University of Massachusetts. And Amherst, yeah. Uh, I know that he passed away in 96. Um, Six years after this interview. So I did a little bit of, of research as well on on what his degree was on, just because I was really curious. Like, like did, how do you become an expert on the 12 days of Christmas? Right, how, is this guy, like, does he really know what he's talking about, or is he just speculating? Or that, was that his job and this was his idea? Because, like, producer of music, Robert Venable, says, <laughs> I mean, that doesn't mean I'm an expert in whatever this 12 days of Christmas is. Right, right. Um, so, first of all, I, I, read, I read the article that this came out of. Yeah. And uh, it, it was very interesting. Um, but it does seem like he's just kind of guessing like everybody else. And, sure. um, and then also, you know, his, his degree doesn't necessarily make him even close to an expert on something like this. <laughs> exactly. Um, and he, he says multiple times, the only thing, uh, that, that, you know, even has anything to do with Christmas in the song is just the name of the song or how about every line? Um, you know, on the blah, blah, blah day of Christmas. Um, but also going back to uh, his main argument and in sort of his deductive reasoning on why this is not a Christian song and why it's most likely about a wedding is that, uh, you know, nothing in the song has to do with, with, you know, Christianity or Catholicism. Uh, but back to my point that you're not going to, it wouldn't, you're yeah, right. You're not going to yeah. want to let everybody know, Hey, this is a Catholic song. Yeah. You can tell by the words. Yeah. Uh, hang me now. Um, <laughs> but the other thing too is, uh, the Bible references very solidly. Jesus himself, um, talks about himself as the bridegroom and the church. Oh, wait a second. As his bride. This is kind of overlapping a little bit, right? What if it is a wedding song and a Christian song? It, I'm saying it could be. Um, and uh, there's so many references uh, all throughout the gospels, the uh, the four calling birds saying, uh, you know, that the groom is coming for his bride. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, so I don't know. It, uh, I, I think that I that could be further evidence that it is, it is actually, in fact, a Christian song about Christmas. Ooh, we got, coming, we got yeah. deep there. Yeah. All right, so let's just tell you some, Okay, so let's just say some interesting facts that we've learned in our research before we get into some really interesting facts. Just kind of lighten the mood a little bit because that got a little deep. All right, so one last thing uh, before we jump over to some interesting facts. The, I, I think in, in my research, the biggest sort of um, uh, like attempt to debunk that it's a Catholic song, Okay, all the articles kind of referenced uh, that college professor. Yeah, there's a couple of them, but yeah, he was very loud with his speaking on on the topic. And so, uh, so I just thought it was really interesting that you can find other college professors um, who argue the opposite. And I, you know, I already mentioned him earlier, but Dr. Paul uh, Spilsbury, he's a doctor, he's got his doctorate, has studied uh, history, theology, also studied the Bible to kind of say that just because a college professor says, right. this is what it is. Right. Oh, he's a college professor. He must know. Um, they're, they're both sides uh, sure. coming from college professors. So that's not, and not a- Just story. because they have an education, a higher education, that doesn't mean that they are educated in this topic necessarily. There's, or the kind of aspects a, of this topic. It's kind of a mystery, yeah. Um, to me, it makes sense that it just was simply published after it was no longer a secret. Maybe. That makes uh, sense. But all right. So fun facts. Uh, we kind of covered this first one. Uh, 12 days didn't end on Christmas. Uh, they ended um, beginning of January. Beginning of January. January 6th. Started December 25th. Uh, that's um, the beginning of the, the 12 days. Yeah. And the, on, on the epiphany, when it ends, uh, the 12th day is actually sometimes called the 12th day, which is obvious, or Three Kings Day, while the eve of epiphany is called 12th night. So kids, if you're listening, tell your parents right now, uh, that were you're upset that they haven't told you that Christmas actually lasts <laughs> for 12 days. There's more. And beg them. Please beg them for more gifts. Beg them. Because this whole 12 days is supposedly a time of joyful prayer and vacation from labor in which gifts are given. Tell the them time. that if they really love Jesus, they'll give you a gift every day <laughs> for 12 days and lots of gifts uh, on the 12th day. And if you are, yeah, if you're atheist or agnostic or um, Jewish even, because Jewish only have eight days of fun gift giving, um, maybe you can, now's the time to convert. 
Maybe you should jump on board with the 12 Days of Christmas and say, hey, we need this. This is something that we need for our- Lots of gifts. <laughs> All the gifts. Selfish country people. Um, yeah, so the total number of gifts given in the 12 Days of Christmas song is actually 364, if you do the math. It says compounding, right? So it's like, by the end of it, 12 partridges- in pear trees. Yes, and then, yeah. So it ends up being 364, which is consequently the number of days in the year. Unless it's 365, but, you know, around there. Unless it's a leap year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just save, save the paycheck for one day. So this one's fun, and you look this up, uh, and this is pretty mind-boggling. In 2018, drum roll please, the total cost, the total cogs, cost of goods for... The 12 days of Christmas is... I'm still drum rolling with my little glottal thing oh, here. sorry. Uh, $39,094 and, oh yes, this exact, 93 cents. <laughs> that was a symbol. <laughs> um, yeah, which is up 450 bucks from last year or 1.2%. So that lets you know inflation. Um, yeah, cost of living and stuff. But even with that inflation and cost of living um, going up by 1.2% on some things, six of the 12 items, so half of them listed, um, remain the same price as last year. And those include the cost of turtle doves, French hens, calling birds, swans, maids, and ladies. Apparently, the Lord's price went up a little bit. I was about bit. to say, I kind of want to know, I know <laughs> what, what exactly, what, but like, what, what are they looking for? What's their reference for Where? maids and milking and... <laughs> Ladies dancing? Um, what kind of dancing? I don't know where they do the research, but you can look at PNC Christmas Price index.com and this is actually a thing and there are researchers and people who did the math and keep tabs on this from year to year to year for a very practical reason right um yeah and like they kind of track it to see how the economy's doing and they base it off of this they like pay, for real this is a thing like the, economists yes they actually look at this index uh, pnc christmas price index.com to see how the economy's doing compared to last year or the year before um but yeah, you were telling me about the cost. You did the math here. The cost for all 364 gifts, if you bought them um, in 2018, what that number was. $170,609.46, which is up half a percent uh, over last year. Man, that's a lot of money. I was going to buy it last year, but I couldn't pull, pull the trigger on it. But this year, now it's up half a percent. I can't do it. So just for clarification, uh, $39,094 for just the, the the 12th verse essentially right all right. the way through one once. one partridge one pear tree two yeah turtle doves and this is for three all 364 yeah. gifts so the whole song as a total 170 uh 170 and a half grand yeah that's ridiculous um did you know that in northern counties of england the song was often called the 10 days of christmas because there were only 10 gifts in their version hmm yeah. i did not know that now you do in the Faroe Islands, there's a similar Christmas uh, counting song. Here, the gifts include one feather, two geese. <laughs> this is cheaper. Th three sides of meat. That's like I, filet. I like they just kind of cut to the chase. They're like, hey, we're, you know, we're having feathers and meat, bro. <laughs> Four sheep, five cows, six oxen, seven dishes. You have to have something to eat them. Very with. practical. Yeah, of course. Uh, eight ponies. For the daughters. Just got completely impractical. <laughs> Nine banners. Back to practical again. Ten barrels. Barrels of what? Uh, or for what? Could be like, you know, true. a rodeo. Yeah, okay. Uh, 11 goats. Oh, See? you should, you should. Uh, That's where I got the idea, man. Man, you should be marketing to the Faroe Islands. <laughs> uh, 12 men. Just random guys. Just any 12, okay. Often homeless. Uh, 13 hides, 14 rounds of cheese. That's my favorite one, by the way. And 15 deer. That sounds like a big spread. That's a lot. I think this is basically... With the exception, with the, I think this is basically with the exception of the twelve men, just a buffet, and some ponies entertaining people. Depending on who you are, <laughs> and then, <laughs> including know, or not including the twelve. I men. don't know the rituals on the Faroe Islands right now. Hannibal? Maybe, maybe they, maybe they are cannibals. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is my favorite part of this whole episode. Um, this is where we dive in each day, each gift, and kind of talk about some things about it, including the cost and and uh, what. They actually mean, if not the Christian meaning, what they would mean um, otherwise. All right. So, partridge in a pear tree, total cost $220.13, up 0.1% from last year uh, of a partridge 
and a pear tree. Did you know that Partridge in a Pear Tree might not be the actual original lyric? I have heard this, and I've also heard that the song may have have uh, some French influence. So, right, especially about this particular gift and slash day. So some evidence actually suggests that the lyric Partridge in a Pear Tree is actually an anglicization of what would have begun, like, begun as a French word for partridge, which is perdri, P-E-R-D-R-I-X. So in French, it's perdri. Padri. 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 Um, the original line would have been a partridge, comma, un perdri. So it sounds like uh, a partridge in a pear tree. Hmm. Un partridge, a partridge, un pear tree. I wonder what that means. Um, it just says a partridge. A partridge. <laughs> so, two different languages. So uh, this name was actually chosen to honor Perdri, uh, who was thrown off of a tower by his jealous uncle. Uh, Your guess is as good as mine. Dadalus, on this one. Uh, yeah, sure. But was saved from certain death by his mother, who changed him into a partridge. That's really weird. Perdri. Um So upon researching this episode, I found. A website that gave that, that was for um, you know word freaks, people who love looking up like the meanings of words and the history of of the language. Wait, did you just partridge? I just partridged. So partridge may have come from the Greek word partisthai. I don't know how to say that, meaning to break wind. So I apologize for my partridging. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bit of partridge. So next time you're when when you're with your family for the holidays, you can you can turn around to your your uncle who thinks he's hilarious and be like, <laughs> "Did you just partridge?" Oh, every time they sing that line in a partridge in a pear tree, you just think <laughs> someone who farted, <laughs> somebody who farted in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but in 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 real life, all real life here, uh, it was probably a red legged partridge, which was introduced to England as a sporting bird just before the time the song was written. This makes sense. Uh, let's talk about some more birds. Okay. On the there second are a lot more day. to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, two turtle doves, uh, $375, which is the same from last year. I cannot help but think of anything other than doves with turtle shells. So, Like, like Mario. Uh, well, I was going to say kind of, like kind of turtle. You know what characters. that actually makes a lot more sense? I was thinking more like Ninja Turtles, but with dove heads. I'd, same yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. All the same. Um, so turtle, should have known. Uh, has nothing to do with the reptile, but rather in oh. Latin, tur tur. Tur tur. Uh, uh, like the sound it makes. So turtle doves go. Tur 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 tur. Yeah, the turtle doves are European turtle doves, which are native to England and would have been widespread in the 1700s. That makes sense. It does. Uh, common blackbirds can sleep with half of their brain whilst the other half is awake. That was interesting to me. Um, and uh, so this is known as, what's it called? Uni- unihemispheric slow wave sleep. I wish I had unihemispheric slow wave sleep. I'd take unihemispheric medium wave sleep. Oh, fair enough. Uh, hey, if you're out there and you have unihemispheric high wave uh, sleep, let us know. Yeah, just shoot us a message. Or fast wave sleep. Either way. Uh, so recorded in most bird species, uh, this neat little trick, uh, provides birds with the ability to remain alert and active for long periods of time while still getting their beauty sleep. I need this ability. <laughs> this needs to be like a superhero. <laughs> like, like you can still mix a project and take a nap at the same time. And be resting, which sometimes I do. Take I, a nap while I'm here. <laughs> Depending on who you ask, I might, I might be in a permanent perpetual state of unihemispheric <laughs> sleep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I only use one half. I, you're very generous with that. Oh, well, uh, so on that <laughs> note, the third day. Remember when we were best friends? <laughs> a long, so the third long day, time ago. Three French hens, which is $181.50. No change from last year. May actually be Feverol's chicken, named after the French village Feverol's. Mm. Well, it's thought that French hens refers to a foreign type of chicken, not a distinct breed. Yeah, so. I was reading that they say French, but it may just mean foreign to wherever you're from, not necessarily a French hen. As, like, like that's not what it's called. It's just a foreign hen from not you know not where you're from. Like when you speak naughty words and you say, Sorry, "Pardon my <laughs> French," you're not literally talking about the French language. That's not really French. That's weird. I thought I was fluent. <laughs> Whoa! Just kidding. My mom listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak French at all. 
Uh, <laughs> tell me about the fourth day. Uh, four calling birds. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite part of the whole podcast. $599.96. Couldn't round that one up to $600. Almost there. <laughs> uh, it is the same as of last year, although for 2019, really, we should just give it the extra four cents. I know it's going up, but four cents, really, just to see an even 600 Just add one penny per calling bird and call it a day. I count that as a win. I do too. So, it's actually not calling birds. They are for collie birds. C-O-L-L-Y. Because we love you. Collie is actually an obsolete word meaning grimy or sooty like a chimney sweep. Chim chimney chim chim shrew. Um, Actually. Blackbirds. Blackbirds. That's interesting. So collie birds were blackbirds. Which is an interesting gift to give somebody when you're giving them all these nice delicious birds. You're going to give them just like blackbirds. Yummy. I like blackbirds. <laughs> Blackbird singing in the dead of night. So this one might throw you for a loop here. Dun, 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 dun. So many cool facts on this part. So the fifth day, five gold rings, five golden rings, 750 bucks, actually down 9.1%. The cost of gold plummeted a little bit last Ooh. year. So uh, that, that took a hit on day five here. But um, the price of gold fallen near nearly 10% in the last year, making those five rings about the same price they were two years ago in That's 2016. Depressing. I know. So again, this is where this index comes into play, like how the, the market's doing, how the industry's going with finances and the economy. But let's be honest. Okay, now we'll start. Did these five golden rings really have anything to do with golden rings? This is a cool fact. Maybe not. It might actually refer to five pheasants. So the switch from four collie birds to jewelry, you know, we've done bird, 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 jewelry, and then back to bird, back to bird again. Um, it doesn't make sense. The five golden rings is likely a reference to ring-necked pheasants. Huh. Yeah. That is actually very interesting. Um, however, in the 1780 publication, uh, it includes illustrations that clearly depict the five gold rings as being jewelry. Ooh, However, that debunks that, as I feel like I've proven very well um, in this, uh, which will be my dissertation. Go ahead and um, I need to transcribe this episode. Um, <laughs> or hire someone to do that. It's like a lot of work. That uh, by the time it was actually published, the song was nearly 200 years old. So That's you're, what I believe. you're thinking that since this was written in the 1500s, we'll give it 150 years. Okay, you know, 1600 ish, 16, early 1600s, that the they were just gifts of birds, not jewelry. That does make a lot more sense. We've got birds, 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 jewelry, more birds. I guess you're right. Here's a here's a fun fact: being maybe uh, it's the Olympics. <laughs> being a yeah they just gave the olympics that's the thing um being that we are primarily a music and sound podcast this part's interesting to me the two bar motif for five gold rings when we get back into the da -na 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 -na. or golden rings if you're not a freaking weirdo yeah i know it depends on how weird you are i'm pretty weird um, that wasn't actually added until 1909 by English composer Frederick Austin. I wonder how it was sang prior to that. Well, if you go to the Wikipedia page all about the 12 Days of Christmas, there is sheet music. It's all transcribed out for you on how it was and how it was changed from you know revision to revision. Oh my! There were little flourishes added and like parts that we don't sing now that were there for hundreds of years. It's interesting. Oh wow! Not like 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 words or anything, but flourishes like da 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 that we never do. We should we should actually like go to the original version and and uh, well, I mean, it wasn't. We don't know the original version, but the first the fir we should go back to the to first music published version. Yeah, and uh, and and like we score it out. Okay, that I'm would down. Be fun. Let's do it. We'll do it. Maybe maybe we'll do it for next week. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah. uh, after five comes number six. That's right. Uh, just had to look at my notes there. Yeah, what does come at? Does six come after five? Most of the time. I was confused. Yeah. Uh, six geese a laying, which I was always so confused. I always thought it was six geese a laying five golden rings. Six geese a laying Which five. created a very complicated That's and confusing <laughs> image inside of my like 10-year-old brain. Unless you were a big Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory fan where they lay golden eggs and that's kind of fun. Yeah. So 
cost of six geese who are laying. Uh, 390 bucks, up 8.3% from last year. So if you have laying geese, uh, you're winning. It's in a seller's market right now. Yeah, <laughs> get rid of those things. <laughs> uh, the geese laying are gray lag geese, still widespread in England, which are the forefathers of most breeds of domestic geese today. Uh, the birds are a common sight on ponds and marshes and have a very distinct horse honking. Another thing you shouldn't do in public is honk horses. How many days did you spend in county for that? That was the next 14 days. <laughs> Honk. <laughs> it was, it was Definitely not re- police horses. It was don't do that. During parades. Your, on your release day that you recorded your Guinness World Record for cricket blanket. Yeah, oh, something off the... Akron, Ohio. Yeah. Oh, man. So seventh day, seven swans of swimming. 13125 bucks. But you'll be happy to know that hasn't changed since last year. I year. would love seven swans as a freaking gift. Seven swans. I feel like that's a lot of money for a bird. That's a lot of money. So they're actually mute swans, a species kept in Britain at the time of semi-domesticity and considered crown property. This kept them from being hunted to extinction as they were in some other areas. They have now been introduced to the United States and are in an invasive species in Michigan. Oh, wow. So uh, not quite mute. They are, however, much quieter vocally than other swans. So here's my question. Why are they so expensive if they're taking over Michigan? I don't know. Maybe they were expensive. I don't know. Maybe we need to move up to, you know, M- Michigan and try to... Just go hunt some swan. Not hunt, but... I'm, I'm gather hunt for some swans. eBay them. And uh, yeah, sell Let's those start bad flipping boys swan- <laughs> Flipping <laughs> swans. We're swan flippers. <laughs> eBay.com. New, new TV show on... TV, home and garden, whatever. Eighth day, eight maids of milking, 58 bucks. If you've got, I was about to say, if you've got some maids that need some milking. <laughs> That's not quite right. You'll spend more than 14 <laughs> days down the county for that one. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> nope. Uh, <laughs> milk maids were associated with uh, what, good skin? Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, at, at this time period. And they were likely to avoid the smallpox that scarred so many. Uh, because of their close association with cows, they were exposed to cowpox, a much less serious disease that made them immune to smallpox. So because they didn't have a lot of human interaction, they spent a lot of time um, milking the teats of cows. Not goats? Um, not goats at the time. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't around then. Um, I was in a different part of the country. They, uh, they, didn't, you, they, they acquired the cowpox, which gave them the immunization for the smallpox um, virus or, you know, similar ones to that. So they never ended up getting it, which didn't scar, so that our face weren't scarred like average humans at the time who got that. And they were very fair-skinned women. They're very sought after. I'm just trying to figure out what $58 for what exactly? Is that like, if you want to hire a milkmaid, uh, it's 58 bucks an hour. Or is it $58 for eight milkmaids for an hour to milk your cow for you? Or are we selling milkmaids right now and it costs $58 to buy one because is that's that slavery? A, that's a problem. Abraham Lincoln that's would tra- not be happy with this. trafficking. This is an issue. Um, but I don't know why the price is so low. But that is, I found that on several sites, 58 bucks. By far the lowest price on the list. I think for Christmas, I know what I'm going to get you. Uh, don't look at the list. Yeah, please don't. Mm. Don't look at the list. My budget's 58 bucks. I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give them to you and your wife. You both can have them. Officer, it was a gift. <laughs> they, they were gifts. From a friend. <laughs> he was kept singing his Christmas carol. I don't know. Something, <laughs> something about Catholicism. I don't know what it was. Nine days. Oh, so I see. This one. This is, this is where they make up for it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Doesn't pay to be a milkmaid, but it does pay to be a dancer. If you were a dancing lady, the nine ladies dancing would cost you 7552 bucks. And 84 cents, which no change from last year. That's a big sigh of relief. So wait, cost, so cost of labor has not gone up for dancers, but their cost of goods has? I mean... I feel sorry for you if you're a dancer and you want to buy a partridge. I don't make and the a rules pear here. Because yeah. the price has gone up You can't have you. nice things. But you haven't made more money since last year. Nope. Maybe it's time to raise your rates, dancing ladies or milking maids. Um, yeah, but the social system placed lords and ladies above common people living on the farms. I was so, just about to say that. A lady was not the same as just a female. No, a lady, like my lady, you know, like the whole put on an accent and act like you're wearing chain link 
clothing with a sword and have a face mask and you'd be like, my lady, <laughs> my lord. <laughs> it was a, uh, a class. It was a, a symbolism of your class. Yeah, a social class. Uh, so on the 10th day, 10 lords a leaping, $10,000. Don't know where that came, price came from because I'm not completely sure what a lord a leaping even is. I feel like it's another way of dancing. It's like a fortnight dance. Fair enough. I think it's like a very high statured gentleman and he is able to, um, he just, you know, bending your knees in midair from one spot to another, back and forth. So this is the portion of the podcast where we talk about uh, pay inequality amongst uh, men and women and how this is a problem. It's true. We really need to raise this issue. 7,500 bucks for uh, nine ladies, 10,000. You know, actually... Now that I'm thinking about this, yeah, we're, this is not right. And but but the guys raised their prices by three percent. Now is this global market? I don't know. I think this is the United States. Okay, this is a problem. Yeah, I don't know how this works. Income inequality. I think we need to write a letter to somebody. Write to congressman or oh, woman. The Pope. Write the Pope. Depends on what you believe. Eleventh uh, day. This is my favorite day. Pipers piping. Eleven of them. Twenty eight hundred dollars and four. Plus 40 cents. Was one of them named Peter? Um, he was too busy picking pecks of pickled peppers. To be piping? Something. I don't remember what he was doing at the time. But that's up 3.5%. So the pipers piping, the drummers drumming, who entertained the upper class, the performance would have been an expression of military strength as well as general festivities, dancing, and making of all things merry. Which is, you know, that time of year. Very festive. Um, but I bet that they would probably all appreciate all the birds that came to the feast, if you're asking me. Uh, I bet. So now, Robert, yeah. as a drummer yourself, mm-hmm. um, I'm not a drummer um, or drummist. I'm a little curious about what it, uh, what it costs to hire you. And I'm seeing on this list for 12 of you, it costs $3,038 and 10 cents, which is up 3.5%. So yeah, we're now charging $253 and 17 and a half cents um, per drummer. Per drummer, per... Per feast. Feast, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so as long as we're able to be fed, that is what it's going to charge. That's not too bad. I think actually 250 bucks is pretty average for what you could pay a drummer for to, to fill in for a show for you if you're a, a band. Fair enough. Um, it's a little more than it pays to be a piper piping. Uh, but significantly less than to be a lady dancing or a lord a leaping. I don't know, man. So what if you were a lord who could play drums or a lady who could pipe? I mean, do you get double wages? Uh, I think, mm, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends if you're supposed to leap and whatever while you pipe or drum. I'm sure you would probably try to pipe if you were also a leaper. But, you know, if they're, if all the pipers were filled then you'd have to settle for leaping. I just don't know what they did with all the birds. Do you think they were for eating? Because those swans <laughs> are very beautiful. <laughs> but I bet they make it... But are they tasty? I don't know. I've never had swan. Probably not. I'm just going to guess not, or else we would be eating a lot more swan. I've been to some... Well, they're expensive. Well, but I mean, I'm sure chickens were a lot more expensive before we started raising them like we do now. Well, maybe in Michigan you can get swan fairly readily. <laughs> <laughs> just go to McDonald's. I'll have the uh, McSwan burger. And uh, I don't think PETA would like that idea. PETA? PETA! That's, that was horrible. Do your best, like, oh, I'm Lois. Bad. You have to try it. PETA! Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. I mean, I was worse. I'm not good at it. That was pretty bad. Yeah. Family Guy reference. I've, I've actually never seen a full episode of Family Guy. Okay, so my first episode of Family Guy, I saw on the day before Thanksgiving... 2003. And the reason I know this was because, nope, it was Thanksgiving Day, 2003, because I had just left the emergency room. Wait, what? Let's tell this story for our patrons. I'm in. Yeah, okay. So I'll tell my drumstick story. I'll tell this whole family guy slash drumstick story, which is very interesting. It involves hospitals. It involves a lot of things. I hope you have a strong stomach, patrons. Um, we'll tell this in a private podcast that we'll share with our patrons um, and release it this week to the, the private Facebook club. You also have another story that I want, uh, that I want you to share, and I want to hear it again, uh, about the time that you hung out with DMX and the Rough Riders 
in an airplane oh. hangar and there were police and there, guns and there's a lot of things that happened that night. Yeah. I'm this story blew my mind. Okay. Um so we'll put both of those in the podcast. So if you are uh if you're one of our patrons, uh you'll be getting this. It'll show up on Podbean. It should go to your email inbox. Uh it'll be for patrons only. If you're not a patron, Robert how do you become a patron of the Turned Up Podcast? And what does that even mean? Well, first of all, it's easy to become one. You go to www.turneduppodcast.com and hit enter. So it goes to the page. Once you're at the page <laughs> in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a thing that says become a patron. Just click on that and choose what you want. And when I say choose what you want, I mean we have several different um, different options for you, different things that we want to give you for helping us. Um, and that could be everything as simple as a sticker going to a cool mug, which we're doing a giveaway for. Check out our social media pages right now if you're interested in that. Um, to sitting in the studio with us and hanging out or recording the intro to our podcast. Uh, access to the secret podcast that we're going to record like, with these fun stories that we can't say um, on the air. Or... Um, you know, we get to see our show notes, stuff that we have like in our in our f- private documents and files that we share that we talk about on the podcast. Things that might not make it into the regular podcast that we cut out because we're like, ooh, maybe we'll get in trouble for saying that publicly. You have access to that. Um, but we have a ton of patrons. We have a lot of cool um, people who support us, and it's as little as five bucks a month, and that's literally less than you can get um, a meal for at any fast food chain. Right. Yeah. One one trip to less than one trip to McDonald's, and it's per month. It's really easy to opt out to if you're just tired of listening to us in your ear holes. That's fine. <laughs> That's totally cool. And well, and you can even still listen to us. You but just won't be you won't be supporting us anymore. Which um, is fine, and we'll just write you off. We we <laughs> just kidding. We uh, we seriously love and appreciate our patrons who have brought this episode and so many others to you, and will continue to bring episodes. Um, and we've got some great ones this week. Uh, I, let's let's hit this list. Um, okay, let's go. Number one, Laura Ann Elise Seven, Samantha Seeger, Natalie B, Jen Walter One, who has been in the studio with us and sat right over there while we recorded. And if you've been listening, you heard her show intro. That was fun. That was a fun day. Um, Josiah Eight Twenty, M D Biaco. Who Josiah? You you do know Josiah? I do know We've Josiah. We've been talking to him in our private uh, patron uh, uh, Facebook group. Yeah, in the fi- the Facebook group. What up, and- Josiah? Um, yeah, what's up, man? And thanks for doing drum covers of As We Ascend. That's kind of cool. And he totally called you out for saying that, that I didn't know him. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> stupid. I'm sorry, Josiah. My, my apologies publicly. Katie Mouse 713. Uh, Michael J. 83. And Davin C. Casey. What is up, Davin? Man, I need some new music from Davin. I agree. You know, Davin's been putting out new music. Uh, you can check out, uh, look up Davin Casey. Uh, I know he's on Facebook and he has a SoundCloud that he's been recording some tunes he's been writing and yeah. they are really killer and I'm begging him to come and work with me soon. And actually, Davin, I owe you an email. Oh, so you dropped the ball. I dropped the ball. Dang it. I always drop the so ball. So those are our patrons, are some of them, a handful of them off the list for today. Yes. So thank you tremendously, um, for all of your love and support, please leave us a review, five stars, screenshot it. Yeah, post um, it Post it and tag us so we, we see it. Yes, it can be, you can post it on your Instagram, you can post it on your Facebook, you can post it on your Twitter, um, post it from your page, don't, don't message us because we do get a lot of messages, but if you post it and tag us in it, uh, we'll see it and uh, of course we'll be happy to share it. Um, but it also enters you to win uh, an exclusive very, very uh, rare uh, turned up podcast mug. It's actually really cool. The inside of it's red. I drink out of it. I had some tea out of it the other day. Literally, it's the only mug I use. It's I love a it. really cool mug. And I'm not just saying it because it's our mug. It's a really cool mug. And of course, if you would rather sign up as a patron, uh, I, one of the packages, you get one as well. But this one doesn't cost you anything. Make a social media or make a review, post it on your social media. And uh, there will be multiple winners. Um, yeah, so, to tag us, it is on on Facebook. Uh, yeah, facebook.com slash turned up podcast. And of course, Instagram and Twitter at turned up podcast. That's for both of those. And always on the web, www.turnedupodcast.com. Um, go on there, check out past episodes. We've got it organized really nicely on a calendar so you can go and look month to month um, and also see our beautiful mugs. You can see what we look like uh, and really big on the website um, or on your phone, really small. 
Uh, oh, unless you have a really big phone, then back to big again. Back to big again. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, we love you. Thank you so much for listening and giving us your ear this week. We're excited. This is December. Uh, it's almost Christmas, so we are doing Christmas all month. Um, so happy late Thanksgiving, but early Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah to uh, to all of you celebrating that. And until next week, this is Nashville signing out. Peace. Peace.